So good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service this morning. Um, we would like to invite you this morning as we begin to get onto menti.com um, because this will be a way for you to follow through with our readings and our slides for this morning. And at the end, we'll be inviting you to participate in our reflection question. So just like to um, suggest for you to get on, you can either uh, scan the QR code or use our short link fcc.li slash menti. And now reading from Mark 14, 26 to 51. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all of them deserted him and fled. None of us could sleep. They came and arrested Rabbi Nine last night. The man scattered and ran back here. Here, where we had the Passover meal. Was it just last night? when we were remembering liberation from slavery? Was it just last night 
when Rebbe and I recounted how God brought our ancestors out from Egypt. Here, where Rebbe and I washed our feet. Was it only a few hours ago when he took off his outer robes and knelt before us and washed our feet? When he said, you call me Lord and teacher, you are right. Tonight I, your Lord and teacher, have set you an example. Do for one another what I have done for you. Things changed so fast. We were all afraid. And when they arrested Rebbe and I, we all ran away. None of us stood by him. And, and Judas, Judas, why did he betray Rabbi and I? Why? We knew each other for so long. He was one of the twelve. Was it because of money? Or was it because he was impatient with Rabbanai's non-violent teachings? He had said, nothing has changed. We are still under Roman rule. He talked about revolution and how bloodshed can free us from the Romans. He had admired Barabbas and the insurrectionists. But he was there. He was there when we ate last night. Rabboni even washed his feet. We were commanded to love one another. How could he, how could he betray Rabboni? We didn't know what they would do to Rabboni. Some of us were weeping. Some ran off and never came back. Rebbe and I said, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed. Rebbe and I's mother wept too. She said she knew for a long while it would end like this. But still, it felt as though a sword pierced her heart. What do we do now? Oh, 
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. And Pilate spoke to them again, then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! And Pilate asked them, but Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple robe, a cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled the passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. None of us could sleep. Some of us were praying. Some of us were worried that the soldiers will come for us too. The man with the water jar who led us here tried to comfort us too. He offered some food, but none of us had any appetite. You need strength in times like this, sister, he told me. And he broke a piece of bread and offered it to me. And I remembered Rabboni's words. This is my body broken for you, and I wept. Then Peter came back. What happened to Rabboni? We asked as we gathered around him. He didn't answer. Is Rabbi still alive? What did they do to him? What do we do now? We feared the worst. Peter, after all, was the rock, the outspoken one. But he was not his usual self. Well, none of us were our usual selves, given what was happening. And we tried to ask him more, but he remained quiet. And we left him alone. He sat alone, quiet, almost on the brink of tears, and broken. 
Then there was pounding at the door and we were all frightened. Was it the soldiers? Have they found us? Are they here to arrest us too? But it wasn't the soldiers. It was one of us. He went out in the morning to find out what was happening and he told us what happened. The Roman governor had asked who they wanted to release over the Passover. The crowd chose Barabbas, who led the insurrection. Yes, the leaders of the rebels who fought the Roman soldiers and were captured, they wanted to free him. And they were going to crucify Rabbanai. And they were marching him to Golgotha. The women, without hesitation, rushed out to the streets. The others quickly followed. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Crucified, my Lord, were you there? Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Were you there? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. Refused 
to shine were you They crucified Rabboni with two of the insurrectionists who were part of Barabbas' band that were captured. It was hard to be there. I kept my eyes closed the whole time. With every strike of the hammer on the nails, we flinched. It tore at our hearts. And how much more of an agony was it to Rabboni? We couldn't control our weeping. And some people were wailing too. But Rabbi Nye's mother was resolute. Yes, tears flowed from her eyes, but she remained steadfast. Something changed within her. Something was not the same. And then she started to sing. My soul proclaims the greatness of God and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life true. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hung, you have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims the greatness, O Lord, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life true. She was praising God. Even this moment, even as her son, 
our rabbi was dying? Even when all rabbi's followers were scattered and the dream of God's kingdom crushed. Then in my heart, I started singing too. My soul proclaims the great, my soul proclaims the greatness of God and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life true. We stood there, tears in our eyes, but resolute. We surrendered, not to the Romans, we surrendered to God. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. We stood there from a distance from the cross, looking as life drained out of Rabbanai. There was no more wailing, just sobs and weeping. Then we heard Rabbanai gave a loud cry as he breathed his last. And then the curtain in the temple was torn in two. Some people said, Rabbanai tore the boundary, the barrier, between God and humankind. But things still looked the same. The Romans were still in power. Things did not change. Is the sword more powerful? They chose to free Barabbas because they thought Rabbanai's teachings of non-violent resistance was rubbish. He was a fool. They thought that we can only overthrow the Romans with violence. Barabbas' way. They believed that the only way to fight power is with more power, more violence, more bloodshed. But Rabbi and I always taught a different way, a different kingdom, a kingdom that is already here with us. Is this it? This promise of God's kingdom where all of us are beloved, all of us treated with respect, all of us cared for, nobody hungry or in need, 
nobody abandoned or left behind, where there is justice, where there's righteousness. Is this how it ends? May I invite all of us to rise just to sing one more time? Were you there together? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? When evening had come, and since it was a day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him, 
whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the mother, Mary the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. As we sing Hail Mary again, uh, join us if you can. We were there at the foot of the cross when they took Reverend I's body down. Reverend I's mother cradled Reverend I's lifeless body and wept, just like how one would cradle one's child. Liturgy by Irene Zimmerman. All the way to Elizabeth, and the months afterward, she wove him, pondering, 
This is my body, my blood. Beneath the watching eyes of donkey, ox and sheep, she rocked him, crooning. This is my body, my blood. In search of her young lost boy and the foreboding day of his leaving, she let him go, knowing this is my body, my blood. Under the blood-smeared cross, she rocked his mangled bones, remembering him, mourning. This is my body, my blood. And no one thought to tell her, woman, it is not fitting for you to say those words. You don't resemble him. God of the moon and stars, God of the gay and single spars, God of the fragile hearts we are, I come to you. Terry, God of the future that will be, what will you
We come to a time of offering, offering ourselves to God. I'd like to invite us to prepare for our giving. I invite the stewards to come forward to take up the offering uh, for those who are giving physically. Raise your hand and uh, our stewards will come to you. After your giving, I will be leading us and inviting you into a meditative space to imagine, imagine ourselves, a gift of ourselves to our Lord. So I give, go and give everyone a few minutes to prepare and complete your giving. If it helps you, you may wish to close your eyes or lower your gaze and be comfortable in this secret space. The sun is about to set over Jerusalem. We, you, are in the outskirts of Jerusalem. We stand before the garden where a t new tomb has been newly hewn out of rocks. You may be standing near the garden or standing afar. We notice Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple of our Lord, carrying his shrouded, shrouded body reverently and gently hurrying to the tomb. Trailing closely behind Joseph is the mother of our God, the mother of our Lord, and the women with her. Now you may be trailing and following far away, watching closely. Or you may be trailing closely behind the mother of our Lord, we stand before the tomb. You feel the evening air starting to cool. Notice the smell in the air, 
the earth mixed with the scents of spice that Nicodemus and the women has brought. Notice what emotion stirs within you as you watch Joseph and the mother of our Lord bring out the body of our Lord into the tomb. You see the body of the Lord laid into the tomb to rest. The light of the world enters the darkness of the human condition. The eternal love of God planted as a seed in the soil of human darkness, death and suffering. A stone is rolled over the tomb. You feel it's trembling on the ground as the rock is being moved and the sound that it makes as the stone is being moved. You approach slowly and gently, laying your hands on the this, on this stone. Feel and sense how it feels and what kind of emotion stirs up again in your heart. I invite you to say a prayer of thanksgiving silently in your heart to the Lord as you rest your hand on this stone. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for suffering and dying for us. Help us, Lord, as we bear suffering, grief and sorrow in our hearts to also bear the hope of resurrection. Help us, Lord, to live out the love you have placed within us now and always. Amen. As we come to the end of the service today, I would like to invite you to pause, to breathe, and to spend some time reflecting about what Jesus' death means to you and perhaps to all of humankind. I want you to spend some time just thinking about this, not just now, um, but what we'll be doing is we'll be keeping this Menti space open right up till Sunday. And so spend time sitting with Jesus' death and the meaning of it as we hold this liminal space. This sacred space between Good Friday, Holy Saturday, into Easter Sunday, this sacred space between death and life, between uncertainty and celebration, between darkness and light. And please come back and join us again on Sunday morning at 10.30 as we celebrate Easter and the dawning of new life and what that means. But for now, may God's love and grace go with you as we enter into this liminal space till Sunday. Amen. <laughs>